It's the day after Wisaka. If this were the year of the Buddha's awakening, this would be when he began his seven weeks of experience and the bliss of release. If this were the day after his total nirvana, this is when they began the seven days of his funeral. So when you have a funeral, you think about what you owe to the person who's passed away. And here it's good to think about what we owe to the Buddha. Without him, as he said, as our admirable friend, where would we be? We certainly wouldn't be here watching our breath. We'd be off someplace else, scrounging around, fighting off other people, trying to look for happiness in areas where other people are also looking for their happiness. Think of that vision that the Buddha had before he went forth. The world was like a stream that was drying up and the fish fighting went over with that last bit, of, last bit of water. That's what life is like when there's no real dharma to know, no real dharma to practice. The practice is there, of course, the possibility, but if there's no dharma teaching, it's very hard for anybody to come across it on their own. So we're thinking about how fortunate we are that we've got this opportunity. The dharma is alive. The opportunities for practice are here. So practice with a sense of gratitude. Look around you. The whole monastery we have here comes from the goodness of the Buddhas, because we all believe in the Buddha's goodness. That we have trust in people who are following his teachings. That's why we have the monastery. And so we look after it. As John Fung said when I first went to stay with him, the practice is not a matter of simply sitting there with your eyes closed doing walking meditation. It's learning to be skillful in all the things that are required to keep the monastery going. Or as John Lee said, when you live in a monastery, your eyes have to be as large as the monastery, seeing what needs to be done. Especially those of us who are living here, it's not our duty to take care of the place. People have come with their generosity, and they don't want to see their generosity go to waste. Remember, this is a gift not to us, it's a gift to the Sangha of the Four Directions. And so we're their stewards while we stay here, looking after the place, looking after the whatever's been given. And that way we show our gratitude. At the same time, we develop the skills of learning how to be observant. If you're not observant outside, if you don't see what needs to be done, then how are you going to take care of what's inside? So look around. There are lots of opportunities for making merit, lots of opportunities for looking after the place that are not being met. It's going to become, it will become part of your own part of me, your own merit, as you look around and take on responsibilities. And don't think that it's eating into your time to meditate. After all, what does meditate mean? The word bhavana in Pali means to develop. As the Buddha said, there are lots of ways you help yourself by looking after others. Lots of ways you strengthen your own mind by looking after others. So keep that in mind. Live here with a sense of gratitude that we're here, the beneficiary of other people's gifts. And show, we show our respect, we show our gratitude for them by taking care of things. Now, when the mind time comes to settle down like this and just sit here with your eyes closed, there's no unfinished business outside that eats away at you. And the practice inside and the practice outside all becomes one training of the mind.